Good morning, Odelsey Middle School 7th graders. And today we're going to be working on ratios of fractions and their unit rates. So before we start today, we're just going to do some warm-ups because we always take y values divided by x values. Well, since we're using fractions today, we will make sure we remember how to divide with these. If you have a fraction divided by a fraction, remember the phrase of keep, change it to multiplication, and then flip the second fraction. And then don't leave your answers as an improper fraction, convert them back to a mixed number again. So that's from a few weeks ago. If you have a, a fraction divided by a whole number or a whole number divided by a fraction, make sure you put a 1 under that whole number, and then you have two fractions. Now you can keep change flip and do your work. And if you have mixed numbers, make them both improper first, then you can keep change flip and then convert if necessary. All right, so just a couple examples of how we do those. So let's take a look at example one here. It says, example one, who is faster? During their last workout, Izzy ran two and one-fourth miles in 15 minutes, and her friend Julia ran three and three-fourths miles in 25 minutes. Each girl thought she was the faster runner. Based on their last run, which girl is correct? Use any approach to find the solution. Now, normally we're trying to find, like, speed of something. We get, like, miles per hour. Well, I got the miles, but this is not hours. It's in minutes. But 15 minutes out of 60, 60 is an hour, 15 out of 60 is one-fourth of an hour. So what I'll do is I'll take 2 and a fourth divided by one-fourth, make it improper, uh, and then I can keep change flip, and then do my work, and I get 9 miles per hour. Our other girl... She ran a little bit longer, took her a little bit longer time as well. 25 minutes, once again, is out of 60 minutes to make a full hour. So 25 out of 60, lowest terms, is 5 twelfths. And 3, three fourths divided by 5 twelfths, and there we go. You can divide that out. And we get 9 miles per hour, so both girls run at the same speed. All right, a turtle walks 7 eighths of a mile in 50 minutes. What's the unit rate when the turtle's speed is expressed in miles per hour? Well, to find the turtle's unit, row, unit rate, Meredith wrote the following complex fraction. She wrote 7 eighths over 5 sixths. Explain how the fraction 5 sixths was obtained. Well, 5 sixths came from what we did kind of in our earlier problem just a minute ago. 50 minutes is out of 60 minutes. So 50 out of 60 in lowest terms is 5 sixths. So, explain how that fraction 5 sixths was obtained. 50 sixtieths is 5 sixths of an hour. Now, how could I use that? Determine the unit rate of the turtle speed is expressed in miles per hour. Well, it goes 7 eighths of a mile and 5 sixths of an hour. 7 eighths divided by 5 sixths. We keep change flip. You can cross cancel actually here because you can divide the 6 and the 8 by 2. You get down to 3 fourths. You get 21 twentieths. Convert and you get 1 and 1 twentieths miles per hour. So just over, a little over a mile per hour. Now, here in our next problem, on our exercises, it says for Tony's or Anthony's birthday, his mother's making cupcakes for his 12 friends at his daycare. The recipe calls for 3 and a 30 cups of flour. This recipe makes two and a half dozen cupcakes. Anthony's mother has only one cup of flour. Is there enough flour for each of his friends to get a cupcake? Explain and show your work. Now, one thing up here before we do get started is the two and a half dozen. Now, a dozen means 12, so a half a dozen means six. So if I have two full dozens, 12 and 12 make 24, an extra half dozen gives me 30 cupcakes. All right? Now, the recipe said three and a half cup, or sorry, three and a third cups is equivalent to making 30 cupcakes. Well, she only has one cup. It's going to make a mystery amount of cupcakes, all right? So we know the top part here is equivalent. We want to find out the equivalence of one cup and how many cupcakes it makes. So I set up a proportional relationship problem. There's two steps when you set these up. We cross multiply the two numbers that I can. I can multiply 30 and 1. I can't multiply this because I don't know what x is just yet. So I cross multiply 30 and 1 and I get 30. And then I take my answer, 30, and divide it by the leftover number. I haven't used 3 and a third yet. 30 divided by 3 and a third. I do the math and I'm getting 9 cupcakes and that's not enough flour because remember 12 friends were at daycare and I was only making 9 cupcakes that's not going to be enough alright let's get turned to our next page alright it says Sally is making a painting for which she is mixing red paint and blue paint the table below shows the different mixtures being used 
All right, so we have all our information here, red to blue all the way through. Some of them are fractions, some of them are decimals. What's the unit rate for values of the amount of blue paint to the amount of red paint? So I focus like on blue to red. Okay, so I take blue, two and a half. I'm gonna divide that by one and a half. Convert them both to improper fractions. Now I can keep change flip. And we get one and two thirds. So there's one and two thirds blue for each red one. What's the amount of, is the amount of blue paint proportional to the amount of red paint? Well, I start looking at some of the other ones. Like if I took, for example, like 3 divided by 1.8, 2 divided by 1.2, and yes, yeah, so you could do all the other numbers too, and they all end up being like a 1 and 2 thirds to 1 type of ratio. You get 1 and 2 thirds every time you divide. So describing words what that unit rate means, it says you'll need 1 and 2 thirds quarts of blue paint for every 1 quart of red paint. All right, now... Over here, we have just a few examples to look at. We have 2 and 4 sevenths divided by 1 and 3 sixths. Well, just convert those to improper fractions. Divide 18 sevenths divided by 9, 9 over 6. Keep change flip, and you can kind of see the work from there. We did problems like this earlier this year. Um, let's see, number 2, one lap around the dirt tracks, one third of a mile. It takes Bryce one ninth of an hour to ride one lap. What's Bryce's unit rate in miles around the track? Well, we don't know how many miles per hour this is. All right, so take the distance divided by the mileage, or divided by the time, I should say, one third divided by one ninth. Keep change flip, and we get three miles per hour. Number three, Mr. Gengel wants to make a shelf with boards that are one and one third foot long. If he's got an 18 foot board, how many pieces can he cut from the big board? I put the board first, and then I'm going to split it up into pieces. So that's why the 18 has to go first, because it's the full board, means split up into pieces this size. So put it over 1, convert the mixed number to an improper fraction, keep change flip, and we eventually get to 13 one half pieces. Remember all this division, so something should be familiar to you from a few weeks ago. All right, we're now going to do number 5. So we're going to look at number 4. It says the local bakery uses 1.75 cups of flour in each batch of cookies. The baker used 5.25 cups of flour in the morning. So how many batches did they make for A? Well, so we'll set up a proportional relationship problem. We know 1.75 cups of flour will make one batch of cookies. But they actually used 5.25 cups, so how many batches will that make? Well, I cross-multiply what I can. I get 5.25 times 1, and then take that answer for step 2 and divide it by the leftover number. So 5.25 divided by 1.75, it gives us three batches. Now, on B, it says if there's five dozen cookies in each batch, how many cookies did the bakery make? Well, five dozen, we talked earlier about a dozen means 12. So you gotta remember, five dozen, five times 12, gives you 60 cookies. And if you know you're gonna have three batches of cookies, 60 times three batches gives you 180 cookies total. All right, thanks for watching. Hopefully you get some good practice in on your school as you work now. See ya.